Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the Jizz King podcast. I'm back with Ivan. How are you doing, Ivan? Good, good. I'm doing really good. Thanks. Uh, it's good to see you. Yeah, it's been a while. Oh, it has been. Uh, yeah. We also had a nice video with Emil in regards to tithes and offering. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully if you guys haven't watched it, check it out. Um, it'd be a pretty good video to watch. Uh, for today, we're actually talking about healing. Mm-hmm. And that's something that we see division in the church. Yeah. Even though you think that's a topic that we shouldn't be divided on, right? Yeah, that's right. Like we've got a lot of things that are dividing the church. Mm-hmm. The last thing you want to see is like, oh, does healing exist in today's world, mm-hmm. in the church, in the 21st century, or it doesn't? Mm-hmm. So how about we start there? What's what's the whole problem with the division? Why Why are mm-hmm. we dealing with this division now? I think there's two main uh, views in it. One is, and and there's very valid reasons why there's division as well. And we'll we'll explore all all of it. We'll go the, you know, for and against for both sides. Cool. Um, And then after that, we'll talk about, you know, can you get healed? Is is healing, miraculous healing possible? But um, the two sides, one is the charismatic you know, soon you just claim that you're healed and you're healed. You know, you see that, uh, you know, healing is also healing is 100% God wants you to be healed. Anytime you're sick, God wants you to be healed type mentality. Uh, and it's, it's just healing as always, you know, you see masses, thousands of people, um, coming in and they're all getting, getting healed in these crusades and things. Then you've got the other view, which is, uh, sort of like the uh, the anti uh, charismatic. Um, I'm not sure what you want to call it, but uh, they they actually they disagree with a lot of things that the charismatic movement is doing, which um, a lot of them are valid, like a sensationalist. You would say sensationalism, yeah, and um, just the pro- prosperity. Prosperity. That's mm-hmm. so. So <clears throat> they see prosperity as you know. You're just coming to God for um, coming to God for healing. You're coming to God for wealth. You're coming to God for uh, just to, to to gain stuff, to gain blessings, and uh, and so that's why they have a very. They've taken the complete opposite end because they don't want people to to come to God for that. All right. Uh, and and also. Um, so th- that side of it. also, I think they think that heal uh, sickness is is okay, you know. Maybe sickness is uh, part of God's plan for you, trying to teach you something, trying to make you humble. And uh, there's a lot of you know verses and things that we can go into both sides. So you know, uh, if you want to start with either or, um, or if you have any questions now, uh, input in regard to that. But essentially. I really want to break down what the two sides believe. Yeah, I mean, what you've mentioned, obviously, that's the two extremes, right? You you have on one extreme that they can twist God's hand yeah. in any situation and receive healing. And you've got the other extreme where it almost feels like you're a beggar. You have no right to ask for any healing. Yeah, I guess it's <clears> like that, yeah. But I know there's plenty of people, they will be... In between. In between, because well, it's a big spectrum. Well, well, yeah, I'm one of those people in between. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I understand. I, I do, obviously, I'm in the sense I'm in between, mm-hmm. but I do lean that the gifts of healing yeah. is present today. Mm-hmm. Um, it is encouraged. You should be encouraged to pray for your sickness. Yeah. It's not something that you want to just to deal with it yourself. Yeah. And I don't say that because it's to do with healing. I say that because in every part of my life, I want to go to God too. Yeah. Right? So it's not just about healing. So if if I want to surrender my whole life to God, and I want to also surrender myself to God, that includes my spirit, my soul, and my flesh, wouldn't I not want to go to God if there is a problem? Mm-hmm. That's how I see it. Yeah. And I don't see, biblically speaking, where healing ceases to exist in mm-hmm. the church. I believe the church needs the gift of healing as well as other gifts, other spiritual gifts. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't see it to be connected to a certain group. 
like for example cessationism can either connect it to apostles mm -hmm. or connect it to the early church or connect it to the church all the way up to the canonization of the scripture mm -hmm. so to me i'm like no that's that's a gift to the church until the lord comes mm -hmm. now could we abuse it yes we can did the early church abuse it yes they did so abusing spiritual gifts is not a sign of the spiritual gifts ceasing so abusing the gift of healing and claiming someone to be healed and they are not healed or pretending to be healed mm -hmm. that's not a sign to say oh i should wash my hand from this whole thing that's a really good point i just want to stop you on that one and yeah. i'll we'll continue yeah, for but uh just when you say pretending to be healed and so that's where that sensationalism comes in because you're in front of a crowd and it's like oh look at me look you know and it's just it's hyping it up mm. and to me sensationalism is just uh something out of the ordinary and wow something really big is happening here when i believe actually healing can happen you know by yourself and no one really knows about it but it's a miraculous healing it's not a, a show it's not a mm. uh, that sense like social is part of it um where I, i would imagine back in the apostles days there wasn't you know a lot of people were healed but it was just apostle and that person yeah you know and so whereas nowadays we do see the that show showmanship So like, like a crowd gathering crowd yeah yeah thousands of people and you're up on the stage and and everyone is getting everyone's coming up and everyone's getting healed and and you need to comply with that or else you'll be the one that's the odd one out yeah um, so yeah. Oh, well definitely i i understand that mm -hmm. and, and the whole point is these gifts are meant to glorify jesus yeah if you read first uh, corinthians chapter 12 speaks about with the spirit we say jesus is lord and you cannot curse jesus with the spirit so the spirit works towards the glory of jesus not the other way around now if you want to take that glory from jesus and give it to someone else it could be that speaker could be whatever the titles they give themselves today right pastors apostles prophets mm -hmm. and so on it's that Oh, the whole attention goes to that person and now let's focus on him because and, mm, my yeah. healing now It's relies to that, person. to that to that person yeah exactly 100 that's my issue yeah like when you read first corinthians chapter 12 all the way to 14 those three chapters it's all about the work of the spirit mm. and it's all about the spirit aiding the church so the church can serve and love and glorify the lord mm -hmm. so that, that that's where i stand on it i i wholeheartedly believe we have the gift of healing today we have many people heal getting healed today mm -hmm. right there are even people come to christ through the miracle of healing yeah right so god uses it as a tool to bring an unbeliever to become his child mm -hmm. and have an eternal life Yeah. We shouldn't dismiss that. Yeah, absolutely. But well, yeah, well, I think while you're on that, let's let's maybe give something for the people who don't. There, there are a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, I've met a lot of people, Christian people, who saying no, healing is not. Um, and so maybe we can bring up some verses and things to to answer them. And I think you've answered, or you've already answered uh, those things. But if we look at, for example. You got Paul's thorn, which yeah is unclear, but I, I'm pretty clear. I th I'm pretty sure I know what Paul's thorn is, and I'll, I'll go into that. You got something in uh, John chapter nine, where uh, there's there's um, a blind man. Jesus heals him. Um, it's the famous one, you know, where he gets the he spits in the mud, and and yeah. but before that, the apostles ask and say, "Who sinned?" that this man is blind was it him or was it his parents which is one part which is kind of saying that uh sickness comes from sin which i, I actually want to touch on that as well today mm -hmm. anyway jesus says it's not that it's uh to glorify god which you touched on so healing is to glorify god but 
There's something that Jesus says afterwards, and he says it's something along the lines of, you know, while the light is here, um, you know, the, then you have these things, but then there'll be a time of darkness where you won't have these things. So is he talking about healing? It was it was in the context of healing. So, yeah. well, um, well can, can I touch on these things? Sure. I mean, you, you also could add Timothy as an example, right? Yeah, right. He had some pains. And Paul didn't say in the name of Jesus be healed. He says just takes a bit of wine. Yeah. He says you're always sick. Yeah. <laughs> These are exceptions to the rule. They're not the norm. Yeah. That's one. Two, when Jesus was speaking to his apostles, he says, now you're walking in the light because I'm here. Mm -hmm. Right? He's the light of the world. Saying there's going to come a moment of darkness. <clears throat> speaking about himself leaving. Mm. And him no longer be here. Yeah. But notice, the people that were supposedly living in the darkness are still practicing the gift of healings, the apostles. Mm. Actually, so, I've just had a thought. Um, there'll be a moment of darkness, but then Jesus says, I will send, I will send, you know, the spirit. The spirit, yeah. So, and then, so you were, maybe that darkness was referring to the brief period from when Jesus died until the Holy Spirit came. And then it's it's sort of closed case because the Holy Spirit does the work. You know, Jesus says you you would do, do greater things yeah. in um, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Personally, I, I do definitely just think that it's just Jesus not being with us physically. Mm. That's all it is. Mm. Um, <clears throat> but then he calls us to be light of the world. So, so the light is still in the world, mm -hmm. right? Even if you look at other passages where Timothy, uh, sorry, Paul encourages the church. He's saying, you've walked in darkness, but now you're walking in the light. So walking in Jesus is walking in the light. So th there is a specific context to what Jesus is saying. Yeah. Now, this is my issue here. When it comes to cessationism, rejecting the gift of healing from a biblical perspective, mm -hmm. I find that there you need to make a lot of mental gymnastics mm -hmm. and take a lot of things out of context. Because sometimes when they sh share a verse, all you need to do is look at the chapter. And you start to say, well, it's not even speaking to us. Mm -hmm. it might be speaking to a different group or it might be speaking about something else. Yeah. Totally different. So when we start to isolate verses, we can come up with any doctrine we like. Yeah, absolutely. But what's encouraging... I'm starting to notice more churches opening up to um, the spiritual gifts being in the church. Just what, on that. Yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry to cut you off. Mm. But what they've realized, they've learned the lesson from the earlier groups mm -hmm. where they see the excess, they see the manipulation, they see the, um, you know, the whole grand... Um, show and they're like what we want is the doctrine mm -hmm. and we want to put all these hypocrisies out of it it's it's really uh good that you're saying that and one of the main points that i wanted to bring today is like you're saying er, the earlier the previous generation churches it was just you know i believe that there's healing her you know that yeah. that, that side strong holding strong and then you got the other side no no you know and it, it was just sort of arguing but now what i've seen recently i've seen two people come out each from each group and and sort of sit back and have like this self awareness and and maybe just compassion for the other side and just awareness and for the other side and trying to understand them. And they've both came out and said why they believe in the, in the two doctrines. So uh, one of them was uh, from, I don't know if anyone's seen brother Spencer Smith. Uh, he's on YouTube. Uh, if you want to go and check him out, he's uh, he, he has some pretty good things, but he, he doesn't believe in, you know, healings and things like that. And he actually came out and he explained why he said, look, I'm not against you. These are two Christians. Like, they're both sides, they're Christians. Yeah. We're brothers. He's like, look, I'm going to come out and I'll explain why. Um, he was, you know, that time into healing and all of that things. When he went on several mission trips, 
He saw the manipulation that was happening. He saw uh, greed where um, leaders were taking advantage of someone with a sickness, taking all the money, you know, give me the, God wants you to plant the seed and that's how you'll get your miracle and things like that. Uh, he, he just sees that happening so much. Um, and these people, they're not getting healed as well. So they were just manipulated by, yeah. you know. By they come on their jets. They come down for a few days, give all these promises, yeah. take people's wealth and fly out. And and even within, uh, for example, like in, in Africa, in the missions in Africa, it's the ministers within there, within Africa. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that we're doing that. And I've really, seen it firsthand. Well, well so... Yeah. And really, so Spencer Smith, who's uh, he's a good Christian, good good guy, uh, but you know, against and he's explaining, he's like, I've seen this, and this is what really made me turned off, mm -hmm. uh, and so that's why they're sharing that view. Uh, and then on the flip side, you've got um, people from the charismatic movement um, in in you know response, and they're saying, look, we're not just prosperity people let's explain some of our backgrounds some of us before we were christian we were in a very difficult situation with either a sickness or something god gave us hope god healed us from from our sicknesses and and it was those people who that and that's why they're, they're okay with the prosperity they're okay with because if you look at the history and how they came to Christ, which essentially is a basis of a lot of Christ's, you know, bringing people to, to him, his ministry was, a, a lot of it was healing. Yeah. A lot of crowds gathered him, around him because of his miracles and his, his healings. So he's saying, so they're saying, you know, don't, don't um, beat on us from the prosperity church. Like, think about our backgrounds. Yeah. Because the Prosperity Church that yeah. promotes healing, they are basically the loudest group. That's but right. They're not the biggest group yeah. within the charismatic movement. Mm -hmm. And I don't even call myself charismatic anymore because mm -hmm. of the baggage that you get right. from that, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you, you're a prosperity guy. Like, no, no, I'm literally the opposite. Right. You would go close to calling me like a poverty gospel kind of thing. Yeah, right. I like to, it's all about giving all and so on. Mm. But I still believe in spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want to tie them to. Yeah, that's, so that's a good point. My encouragement to someone, find a place where they are biblically rich, right? They teach the word and spiritually rich, where they practice the word when it comes to spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. And thank God I grew up in a church like this. I grew up in a church where you could sit down and it almost feels like you're in a Baptist church mm -hmm. with the way they would teach the church, uh, teach the word. But then when you see them practice the spiritual gifts, you're like, oh, looks like Pentecostal. a Pentecostal church. Yeah. So, and, and they didn't go into taking people's money or any of that. Mm -hmm. in, in fact, they would teach the word and say, okay, let's obey the word. Mm. Even if someone else might not be agreeing with you, well, we don't please people. Yeah. We want to obey the word and we want to practice those spiritual gifts. Yeah. So it's the, the line between, you know, it's not take, grab, grabbing money, but it is God's providence. Healing is God's providence. And, and they're open to that. Well, yeah. no, I'm open to that. So yeah. I mean, in Matthew chapter 10, when Jesus sends his disciples, one, one of the verses says, freely you have received, mm. freely give. Yeah. We don't charge for something that the Holy Spirit is doing. Mm. Like the person that's praying over that person and that person is healed, not because that person was capable of doing it. Mm. It's because the Spirit is capable of doing it. Yeah, and there's the example of that with yeah. Simon, uh, Simon the Sorcerer. So, yeah. yeah, that person is just a vessel. Mm -hmm. So I think there are a lot of red flags and I would watch for red flags yeah. if the church is money focused, if the church is manipulating people in the sense of, oh, no, you're, you're healed. And if you're not healed, it's your fault. It's nothing to do with someone else. You just lack faith or you just like they would bring 99 reasons 
why it's your fault. It's not the person that prayed for you. You're not getting your money back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what do you have? I know we can speak a lot about this, but yeah. what's what's your final conclusion? Well, uh, I want to say there's probably a, a few reasons why people get sick in the first place. Um, I don't believe in that just, you know, just if you're sick, you just claim it and that's it, you're instantly healed. I think sometimes there's more reasons behind that. Sometimes uh, God wants to take you through a journey where he wants you to learn to 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 rely on him. He, he wants you to learn to fight spiritually. Uh, I've experienced that. I've experienced those kinds of healings. I've experienced a lot of miracles uh, in my life. Also, another reason is, which I've also experienced, is a sickness comes because of a sin or a disobedience. So just like the apostle says, you know, is it the person's sin? Well, in, in cases, and I've experienced that, if you willfully, uh, you know, go into something that is not right, is not pleasing to God, you know, just like it says, uh when, you know, they're doing the, the Lord's Supper, some people are getting drunk and other people that don't have nothing to eat. And he goes, don't, don't you know that that's why people are sick among, among you? Hmm. So it's, I think God makes it, you know what you're doing wrong. And that sickness is maybe just opening the door f- to, for Satan to come and, you know, destroy and cause problems uh, in your body and in your life and things like that. Nice, nice. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you're looking for a part two, let us know in the comments and give us your opinion. Where do you stand on it? Do you believe that God still works today in a miraculous way where healing still exists in the church? Or are you the type of person you're like, well, we've got the Bible and that is enough for us. And we don't need to go through this. We've got technology, we've got medications, so we're good on our own. Uh, Let us know. What's your opinion? God bless. Take care.